to you. We thank you now. We're just done in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank God for you. We're so glad that you've joined us tonight. And we come to you live from Tampa, Florida, with our walls in the National Church. My pastor is Mr. Randy White. He sends his greetings. I'm Pastor Robert Carpenter. And it's a privilege and an honor to be with you tonight, sharing the word. Let's say amen for Dr. Mark Payne and with and one voice for leading us into the presence of the Lord. Now I want you to turn to Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3. And we're getting ready to receive our tithes and offer, but I want you to go ahead and get that scripture, pull that up on your computer, your laptop, or your iPad, and get ready to hear what the Lord has to say to the church. One thing we can say that God is such an awesome God that he speaks to us through simple things. And a lot of times he doesn't holler, scream, yell, but it's the simple things, quiet, that still small voice. And every time it's amazing because every time the word goes forth, someone, everybody hears the same message, but they get something different out of it. So you have to sit with expectation. Sit with awareness. Sit with your mind set. Get everybody together in the home and you can cast it to your TV. Whatever you can do because you want to hear this word here tonight. That's time to receive our tithes and offering. Amen. We thank God for you, our virtual church members, and we want to thank God for you as you give now. Now listen, tithe of 10%. It's 10% of what God has blessed you with. Your income, your increase. That can be your job, that can be your retirement, that can be your pension, it can be your stimulus check. <laughs> but whatever it is, whatever God has blessed you with this week, during this season, we always give 10% back to him, according to Malachi 3. It says there will a man rob God. Well, you say, God has all this stuff, the world. How could I rob him? And it specifically says, through tithes and offering. We don't want to ever be accused of being a thief. But we want to give God what it says. And I'm telling you, I'm a witness, that if you give God his part, and don't be stingy and hold on to it. Don't be needy. If you give God his part, God comes through with that 90% every time. He'll take it and he'll stretch it. Some of you right now have been without a job. Some of you have been right now trying to get your unemployment straightened out. But somehow God has just met the need. Hallelujah. And so just like that, you can trust God. I once was young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread. So as we give our tithes, if you're a member of this church, our local members here in Tampa, want to remind you that even though we're doing virtual church right now and not here in the sanctuary, live every Sunday and Thursday, we still have the obligations of the church that need to be taken care of. So we want to challenge our covenant members here in Tampa Bay. But then those of you who join us every week from all over the world, and you tune in and you're blessed by this ministry, and you say, I don't have a church home right now. Without walls of my adopted online virtual church, we want you to give as well. We pray for you, our bishop prays for you, our prayer team prays for you all over. And you want to be a blessing, not just to God, but to this church. And then we have our offerings where we give freely. We give where we just want to do something for God. And it says God loves a cheerful giver, which means I'm going to give out of my heart. Nobody's going to put a gun to my head, but I'm going to give the best that I can to bless God. So if you will, there's a link there at the top of that Facebook page that you're watching. You can click that. It takes you over to uh, withoutwalls.org giving page. Also, you can go through the My Church app. Find Without Walls International Church, and you can go ahead and give securely. I'll give you a few moments here to get that straight and go through that. Click through all of that. It's secure. Go ahead and give, and you can uh, give it all. You can give tithes separately for the offering and give it all in one. But make sure we have your information so we can all bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's take a moment. Father, we thank you right now. We bless you. Bless these gifts. 
bless these offerings, bless these tithes. God, thank you for providing and making a way out of nowhere. Thank you, God. Bless my brother and sister that you know what their needs are. And they're giving out of their need. Bless them now. With many full blessings. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and take a moment and click through to do your offering at times when Dr. Mark plays softly. Turning our scripture to Mark chapter 3, Mark chapter 3, if you will turn there, I'll pull it up there on your iPad, got a little word here, a little parable, and the story that Jesus, was one of his happenings. Also, we want you to know that we'll be here Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern, wherever you are. For our morning worship service, Bishop Randy Wright has a word from the Lord for you. And then also, every Thursday, but also be tuning in on this Facebook page for other uh, services that we're archived, that we've archived, that we're going to put up there, and sometimes put up there, and see what the Lord was saying way back then. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And also, if you will, give me some likes, give me some hearts, and go ahead and share this with about three or four people, and tell them, hot dog, this church time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <clears throat> Let's look at Mark chapter 3. Let's look at verse, beginning at verse 1. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. It says there, And he entered the synagogue again, and a man who was, was there who had a withered hand. So they watched him closely, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, step forward. And then he said to him, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they kept silent. And when he had looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, stretch forth your hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored as whole as the other. Look at somebody. You can type this and put this on the screen there and let someone know. You can have it if you're willing to stretch. That's what we're going to talk about. You can have it if you're willing to stretch. Hallelujah. We're speaking of this about the man with the withered hand. Our text begins by telling us that Jesus entered again into the synagogue. And he got there and he was in the presence of the Lord. And they were in the presence of Jesus, the Savior. And you understand something? When we come to church, we're entering into the presence of the Lord. Oh, yes, we've got talent. We've got this air, air conditioning, central air and heat. We've got carpet on the floors and padded chairs. But one thing we must have in the house of the Lord is the presence of God. Oh, yes, you must understand, my brothers and sisters, here they are in the presence of God, wondering what is going to happen because they got caught up in the laws, but they did not realize that the Savior was there to heal. And it says there, uh, there was a man who had a withered hand, and they watched him, and they, they, wanted, they, they were sitting there waiting to see would, they, would he heal the man because it was the Sabbath. So they wanted to accuse him. Understand, my brothers and sisters, there's a lot of people in the world, in the church, that are looking to accuse you. They are looking to call your name. They're looking to say something about you. But you got to let them know, as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need anybody else here. And so uh, they, they do this because religion itself 
has become the biggest hindrance in our lives. People focus on religion, the laws of religion, instead of relationship. Uh, they focus on what the, the, the Baptist law say. That's what they were telling the Baptist say. The Baptist law say this, and the, the, the doctrine say this. But what does Jesus say? <laughs> what does the word say? What is the Holy Spirit saying? And so uh, you must understand, everybody's not going to agree with you. Uh, but for you to be blessed, they, 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 they don't have to like you. They, 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 they're going to go on, they're going to be sitting there looking, saying they love the Lord and trying to persecute you. But you must understand, I know, I know, I know, it comes as a shock uh, that everybody in the church doesn't want you to be blessed. I know that everybody in the church, it's a shock that everybody in the church is not happy to see you be blessed. But you must understand something, don't worry about it, don't fret, because God has a blessing for you. For us. We're in the presence of the Lord. There are some people that really do take pleasure in your pain. They look down on you with their self-righteous religious self, looking down like, wonder what they did to go through that, and wonder what they did to go through that. But one thing I found, that everybody has to go through something sometime. Oh, yeah, you may have, either you're going to be in three places. You're either going to be going through trouble, just come out of trouble, or you're about to enter into trouble. Trouble comes for us. Trouble trumps to us. Life just happens sometimes. But one thing I'm so glad, the trouble don't last always. Hallelujah. And so yeah, we see here in this scripture text, uh, uh, they're watching this Jesus. They're, they're focusing on Jesus for the wrong reason. They were in the synagogue. They were in the house of the Lord, if you will. But they were there, some of them were, for the wrong reason. <laughs> Why do you go to church, huh? I know we go for the fellowship, Conanier, the fellowship to see our brothers and sisters, and we're so, we can't wait until we come on back here in the sanctuary and see everybody that we hadn't seen in person. See them on Facebook is not the same, Brother Chris. You want to see them in person. So, yes, we come to see our brothers and sisters and hug them and just elbow them and all that. But listen, we come, we should come to be in the presence of the Lord. Sometimes people come because they have an agenda. Sometimes people come because they want to do something and they miss what God has for them. I know some people that sometimes they come to church, they're all burdened down, they're heavy laden, and they will leave church and say, oh, that was a good message. I really got to get my life together. Well, you were just in church. <laughs> there was a time right there for you to get it together. There was a time right there for you to come to the altar. One thing I told somebody today, the altar levels the playing field. Everybody can come to the altar. Whatever you have, you can come to the altar. You can make an altar right there where you are and say, Lord, I need thee, oh, I need thee. Ah, so I want you to know here, yeah, yes, you can have it if you're willing to stretch. Somebody say stretch, stretch, stretch. Put that hashtag stretch, hashtag stretch. And so you must realize you know, Jesus is here. He was there. And they saw this man with the withered hand. And you can imagine that he's sitting there now wondering, am I going to be blessed? Is this going to be my day to be blessed? Is this going to be my day to be healed? A lot of times we come to church. We come to the house of the Lord wanting and waiting and hoping this is this the time. But my brother and sister, don't you give up. Don't you fret. God has a healing for you. God has a blessing for you. A lot of times what happens is we give up. We lose faith when it doesn't happen when we think it should happen. A lot of times we sit there and say, I've been going through this all along. I've been going through this for all this time. And God, I'm tired of this. When is it going to be my day? But listen, God has a way of showing up just on time. Almost right at that place where we feel like wanting to give up. Almost at that place where we're just about to say, is it going to happen? I guess it ain't going to happen. That's when God shows up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He shows up sometimes when you're going to get the doctor's report and the results from those tests. And sometimes he'll even look. They'll show you the test results and it don't look right. But God is still, because he, he, they don't realize between when they took the x-rays or the CAT scan, between then and that day, God has healed you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can remember one time I had a hernia. I had a hernia, and they told me they were going to have to do surgery. 
And I didn't want him to cut me. Lord, have mercy. I didn't know I was a big baby. I said, no, no. So we had to go back and we had to schedule the surgery and we had to pre-op. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. I think it was about two weeks. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. I just was believing God. I was on the field preaching and playing all the time. And I said, God, I can't take that break. You've got to do this for me. I still felt the pain. Hallelujah. But when I went for the pre-op, nothing was there. <laughs> Uh, and that was 11 years ago. God will heal. He'll show up just on time. Hallelujah. And so, so he's, this guy was here. This man was here. And look at what they said there in verse 4. He said, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or do evil, to save life or to kill? Now, they were sitting there worrying about what the law says instead of worrying about, hey, whatever you need from the Lord, you can get it right now. And so when they had looked, around them. He said he has looked around them with, verse 5, with anger, being grieved by uh, uh, the heartless of their hearts. Amen. They're grieved by the heartless of their hearts. But even in the midst of all of that, Jesus knew his purpose was to heal that man. Now, he was focused. Listen, Jesus was focused, but we have to be like Jesus and be focused too many times we come with distractions. Too many times we allow stuff to move us and, and get us off the prize and looking at Christ. But when you focus, doesn't matter what's going on around you. Let me tell you something. You could be going on, going through life, trying to mind your own business, leave everybody alone. But stuff just happens. You say, oh, Lord. But that the devil, the enemy wants to get you distracted. <laughs> oh, bless his name. He wants to get you distracted. He wants you to look and look that way when you should be looking forward. But I thank God that Jesus, Jesus was focused and he looked beyond. Even though Jesus got mad. Yes, yeah, Jesus got mad. Yeah, stop telling people don't get mad. <laughs> That's a natural emotion that God puts in us because God gets mad. Jesus just said, be angry and sin not. I could preach that right there. <laughs> Listen, how do you deal with your emotions? Uh, so, sometimes you react to things and and then somebody thinks that your reaction is attacking them. No, your reaction is just raw emotion. Okay? You're, you're, a, you're a person. You're not a bot. You're not a computer. You're going you're gonna to react. But here's where the Holy Spirit comes in. Because there's some, there's some that, you know, they have a problem, a problem with their temper. I know somebody. And you can get mad, and before you know it, <laughs> there's trouble in the barn, y'all. Before you can catch yourself, you got <laughs> Watch out. But the Holy Spirit will come. The Holy Spirit will come and uh, uh, comfort you. Huh. Yeah, you'll be angry, but you'll, you won't go to get revenge. You'll be angry, but you won't cuss them out. You might feel like cussing them out. Oh, bless his name. But because the Holy Spirit abides in you, <laughs> he'll hold your tongue. When you have the Holy Spirit, you'll see the person and it won't bother you. Oh, my, my, my. It won't bother you. No, you didn't forget what they did. But see, you got to release that thing and go through the process. Let the anger have it and get it out. Because see, if you hold that thing in, there's going to be some bitterness in there. Yeah. <laughs> there's going to be some bitterness in there. And then you, so, you, you got to let it go. But see, you'll see the person. And you'll be able to say, how you doing? You won't have to walk on the other side of the church and all of that. You see them. <laughs> you see them. And you can still bless them. And see, that's a testimony because, they, now you're not being a fool, you, you're being Christ-like. Because Christ forgave. Hallelujah. And so what happens, what happens is you can see them, and you can bless them in the name of the Lord. And that's going to take them like, whoa, whoa, wait a second. Now they know what I did to them. Wow. Are they being nice to me? And if they find out, they say, because I have Christ, the Holy Spirit has taken control. So, so Jesus got angry, so you can get angry, just don't sin. And so Jesus got angry at them. Why does it say? Because the hardness of their heart. That part there lets us know that their, their heart was not turned towards him. Watch this now. When you have a heart after God, he will soften and, and, and make your heart sensitive. Sensitive to the people around you. Sensitive to things. Sensitive to the Holy Spirit. But the more you draw away from God, the more you draw away from him, what happens? Your heart begins to get hard. Uh, and, and then you start to get cold, lifeless. 
It's simply and indifferent. You, you, you see people hurting and nothing, there's no compassion in you. Ah, and what happens is your heart gets hardened. And when your heart gets hard, what happens is you focus it on the wrong thing because you can't, have to, you can't feel the compassion for the person that needs the healing. How many times do we follow, we've passed people? God sends people in our way that need a healing, that need a touch, that just need a moment for somebody to give them some love. Not so much so money, not so much a meal, but sometimes just giving somebody that two or three minutes of attention can change their whole life. And so what happens is, but when your heart is hard, you, you, don't, you, you don't see that. You can't see anything. And so this man, Jesus, said their hearts were hardened, and it grieved him. It grieves him. How many times did Jesus, do you think we grieve Jesus when we hurt others, we see others hurting, and we don't bless them? We see others hurting, and we don't touch them. And so anyway, Jesus went here. He said to the man, stretch forth your hand. Now, right, right there where you are, just stretch forth your hand. What, you see, see, whatever it is, because you must realize you can have it if you're willing to stretch. <laughs> you stretch it. You can have it if you're willing to stress it. Because what happens is, stretch it. Because what happens is, sometimes you feel like you can't go on any further. Sometimes you feel like you, that you don't know what else to do. You, sometimes you're weak in your body. Sometimes you say, Lord, my mind is tired, I'm frustrated, and I don't know what to do. And then you get to the place where, God, if you don't come right now and do something, I don't know what I'm going to do. But you got to stretch. Hallelujah. Stretch, stretch, stretching, stretching. I found this out when, when I start trying to exercise a little bit and lose this weight. Listen, stretching. Now watch this. Stretching extends the muscles. But see, if you've been sitting in the same position, sitting still doing nothing, that stretch is going to hurt. Hallelujah. The stretch is going to hurt. When you start moving those muscles and stretching those muscles, you have the first time you went working out, and you were so hyped up and excited, and you were doing everything in the gym. But boy, about 6 o'clock the next morning, ow, <laughs> oh, Lord, you can't move. Because you stretch some muscles, you were using some muscles that you weren't used to using. And so you stretch them, so stretching is painful. Oh, bless his name. Now you say that's kind of oxymoronic because here I am already, it's made me sick. I'm already in pain, but now I got to stretch and go through some more pain in order to get healed. Oh, my, my, my. You better catch that. You better catch that. God will cause it to go through a little pain just to get that miracle. So if you can have it, if you're willing to stretch it. And so Jesus, stretching, stretching, stretching. Stretching means that you're going beyond what you normally do. Stretching means you're going beyond your range of motion. Stretching means you're going beyond religion. Stretching means you're going beyond tradition. Stretching means you're going beyond your comfort zone. Oh, bless his name. Stretching means uh, uh, I'm going to do something that I never did before. To get what I've never had. Hallelujah. You must understand my brothers and my sisters. If he had let people, what people said about him, uh, go and get into his mind, uh, he wouldn't have stretched his hand. He would have been worried about what people think. But you can't worry about what people think. You can't worry about what people say. But you got to make up your mind. I'm not going to let small-minded people limit the power of God in my life. Uh, I've got to stretch. Uh, and see, you must understand, my brother, sisters, uh, when you have to go beyond your range of motion, beyond your comfort zone, uh, my brothers and my sisters, you have to get to a place uh, where you begin to praise uh, like you never praised before. Now, everybody may not dance. Uh, everybody may not shout. Uh, but even if it's just lifting your hands and, and blessing God, uh, you got to stretch Oh, bless his name. Uh, when you need a financial miracle, you may have to stop giving the same thing every Sunday uh, and say, you know what? I'm going to give a little more because I'm going to stretch. Oh, bless his name. Uh, you can have it. Uh, you can get it uh, if you're willing to stretch. Come on, put hashtag. Somebody say stretch. Oh, bless his name. Uh, so Isaiah 54 and 2. 
uh, verse, verse 54, verses 2 and 3, says, Enlarge the place of thy tent, uh, and let them stretch forth uh, the curtains of thy habitations. Uh, spare not to uh, lengthen the cords, uh, and strengthen thy stakes, uh, for thou shalt break forth uh, on the right hand uh, and, uh, and on the left, uh, and thy seed uh, shall inherit the Gentiles uh, and make the desolate cities uh, to be inhabited. Uh, notice all the words uh, speaking of stretching, going beyond, uh, enlarging, uh, stretch forth. Uh, it means to go further. Uh, and after the enlarging, uh, after the stretching, uh, after the lengthening, uh, after the strengthening, uh, then he says, for thou shalt break forth uh, on the right hand uh, and on the left, uh, and thy seed uh, shall inherit the Gentiles uh, and make the desolate cities uh, to be inhabited. In other words, uh, God is saying, uh, there is so much power being released uh, in the stretching uh, that it will even reach a seed. Uh, there's so much power in the stretching uh, it will bring blessings uh, that you never thought you'd receive. Uh, there are blessings uh, when you stretch uh, generational blessings uh, that are released uh, when you stretch forth uh, into the faith realm. Uh, there are blessings. Uh, you need a miracle? Stretch! Uh, you need to be saved? Stretch! Uh, you need a healing? Stretch! Uh, come on, hashtag Take your Jesus. Uh, take hold uh, of that husband's salvation and stretch it. Take a hold uh, of the rebellious children uh, and put them in the kingdom of God uh, and say, my children are going to be saved. Uh, take a hold uh, of that degree and go ahead and get it. Uh, take a hold uh, of that miracle. Take a hold uh, and say, I shall prosper according to the word of the Lord because I'm going to stretch. stop right here. I'm going to stop right here. Listen. Listen. You must realize that my brothers and sisters is Brother Robert playing softly. You have to go further than you've ever done before. Some of you are learning right now how to stretch your finances. My, my, my. Some of you are learning how to stretch a meal. <laughs> so it's not all bad because God can teach you some things that will help you in life through a bad situation in Psalms 119 he said it was good that I've been afflicted so that I might learn thy laws and thy statutes every once in a while it seems that God has to allow some things to happen to get our attention we become complacent, we become entitled. We get so used to everything just being everything. And so God sometimes allows us to go through situations where, are you gonna trust me? Huh. It's easy to trust God when you know the direct deposit gonna be in the bank. <laughs> but it's test when you stretch is when there is no direct deposit and you believe in God for a direct deposit to come in there I was watching the story of the hair salon owner in Texas and how she the judge wanted her to apologize to him for keeping the shop open during the pandemic shutdown and she, she gave him a very nice statement. She said, I'm willing to go to jail for seven days. Listen, my children had to eat. My workers' children had to eat. But the interviewer said, asked her, and said did, when you were sitting in that jail for those couple of days, did you feel like that maybe, maybe I should have gone ahead and just said what, what he wanted me to say? She said, no, I never doubted. She said, and when you know what you have to do, you have to do something different. And I don't mean you got to go out there and do something and go to jail. But listen, hear, hear, hear the point, hear the point, hear the point. <laughs> she knew what she needed to do. And she was willing to stretch. She was fined $7,000. The lieutenant governor, he paid it. Hallelujah. She was 
let out early, released. And she says that the shop has almost been open 24 hours because people have been coming from all over the country and get, getting their hair done and giving her a blessing. She says, thank you for standing up. Somebody standing up. But she had to be willing to block out all the distractions. She, here's what she said. She said, I applied for the small business loan and I applied for the stimulus and all this stuff. She said that nothing was coming in. And the food was getting there and the children were getting hungry. And she said, well, I got to do something. I just cannot sit here and not do anything, do the best I can. And she said right when she opened the shop illegally, all of a sudden, she got a direct deposit. She, it's from one of, the, one, one of the things she applied for. They just put it in there. There was no letter, no nothing. They didn't say who, what to do with it. She got one of the loans. And she said, wow. She said, wow. Notice, when she made the decision to still open the shop, when she didn't have anything, the day before, the money came. Now watch this. It came for her. She could have said, you know what? Well, forget it now. I'm closed down. But she had other people that worked for her that had the children in need. When you stretch and you do what God called you to do, you stretch forth to get that blessing. Don't just get it for yourself. But get it and be a blessing to others. Teach somebody else how to stretch. Say, this is what I did. And you will find that you will continually be blessed of the Lord. All of us, we're getting ready to pray, all of us have prayer needs. All of us have things that we say, God, if you don't intervene, if you don't do something, it's, it's just not going to be done. What you must realize is that's actually right where God allows us to be, wants us to be, so we can take our hands off the of stuff. <laughs> and then let him guide us. And then we stretch forward. We're going to pray. We're going to pray for those needs. Those of you right there on Facebook, you can put just a couple words right there in the comments, or if you want to, uh, you can email us at prayerwithoutwalls.org. Prayer withoutwalls.org but we're going to pray that God blesses you but one thing I've noticed in my study of the word every time there was a miracle before the miracle took place the person that needed the miracle had to do something something hallelujah and in this case, we got to stretch. We got to go beyond our comfort zone. We got to go beyond what's normal. And believe God by faith that when we do that, he will heal us. Those who sit there in the Bible, verse 5. He said to the man, stretch forth your hand. And he stretched it out. And his hand was restored, as whole as the other. God will not just heal you partially. He will heal it, and it won't even look like you ever had an infirmity. He'll heal him. He'll perform a miracle, and it won't even look like you didn't have the miracle before. Hallelujah. But it was when he stretched forth his hand, couldn't keep it in his pocket, couldn't keep it hidden, he had to do it, something. And when he did it, as an act of faith, that's when God met the need. When she set the date to open her shop, because no money was coming in, the money came in the day before. God is waiting on you and challenging you now. Get that need, put that on there so we can pray for you. Even those that are on, you know, those that are on Facebook, some of our covenant members, to pray with you there online. Father God, we thank you right now for this word here tonight. As my brother and my sister there have 
posted and commented and put their prayer need or emailed their prayer need. God, I thank you right now that you are the one that will meet that need. Father, increase their faith, enlarge their faith to know that you are God and besides you there is no other. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, that you're teaching them how to stretch, teaching them how to go beyond their comfort zone. In the name of Jesus, meet the need right now. Meet the need right now. Save, heal, deliver, and set free. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And if you will, right there where you are, just take one hand and stretch it. You can stretch it forward or you can lift it up in praise. <laughs> yeah, every time you lift your hand in praise, you're stretching. Hallelujah. Come on, do it symbolically. Say, by faith, I'm stretching. By faith, I'm stretching. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ah, he's doing it right now. Stretch forth your hand. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. We thank you right now for what you've done. We thank you right now for the praise reports and the testimonies that shall come forth. We give you the glory, we give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, clap your hands and bless them right there where you are. Lift those hands and bless them, clap. Give them a praise. Hashtag stretch. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hashtag, come on, say stretch. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, God just did something for you in your life. If you join us late or you feel led, we want you to go ahead and give your tithes and offering. If you want to give a love seat to God right now, go there, click that link at the top of that Facebook page and give. And while the water is troubled, some of you gave but you held back, so go ahead and give with the Lord put in your heart to give. Hallelujah. <laughs> your tithes your offering. Don't ever cheat God. Don't ever cheat God. God has got you. You didn't even know what the word was going to be about tonight. But now this Holy Spirit is challenging you to give. That's what he said for. Him. We thank God for what he's doing in your life and we thank God. We want to continue to pray for you. And there are many of you that are in states, in the United States, that they still can't go to church. Bless the Lord. And we, 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 we pray right now that God will release that to those governors. Now you can keep the liquor store open. Oh, bless his name. You can keep the liquor store for governor. You can let them go to church. <laughs> let the drunk go to the church. He'll go. Oh, yeah, we want to pray. Thank God here in Tampa, Florida, we're allowed to come to church. We're just, we're just waiting. We don't want to rush everything and start. We want everybody to feel comfortable. Because, you know, when we, we're coming out of our lockdown and all that here in Florida. Thank God for the governor. He's been going ahead and getting everything and all that, but I said, Bishop, we're, 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 we're going to church. Just, just hold on, Brother Rock. Just hold on. Just hold on. Because <laughs> some of y'all say, I ain't going out there yet. Listen. <laughs> now, I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> oh, you understand? And then thank God for the wisdom of the bishop because I was ready to come home. Dr. Rock, I was ready to come home having church. He said, no, you, you keep having church by yourself. Listen. <laughs> but so when we've been announcing the date and the time and everything, that we will have a brother, have an official coming on back in. You know, we go clean up it, dust it off it, re it all over again, and all that stuff. Hallelujah! And I'm believing God that there's gonna be folk that's gonna come back that we never hear. Y'all didn't catch that? They gonna come back that they've never hear before. Hallelujah! God's gonna send folk in there. Gonna send folk in there. And I, I, I think you know what's gonna happen is that we gonna come around and we gonna look. Watch this. Get ready for it. There's going to be some folk we never seen. And some of the folk we expected to see ain't going to be gone. Which somebody said, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. So we're praying for you all 
outside of Florida and other places where you can't be in the house of the Lord on Sundays or during the week. We're praying that God will release that even now. And that this coronavirus is COVID-19. I'm so tired of hearing that thing. Oh, that we send it back to the pits of hell. And that whatever God, whatever God allowed this to happen, that all of us, even as a nation, will get the blessing, get the, the lesson you learned. Thank you. We're praying for you. And we know that you're praying for us. We're going to pray this. Listen, Father, we thank you. We bless you now. Thank you, God. You blessed us with this word tonight. Thank you for teaching us to stretch. We pray for our brothers and sisters all over the country that can't get to your house, but thank you, God, that you've placed us here, even in our virtual church. We thank you right now for everything you're going to do over the course of this weekend, over the course of this next week. We praise you and give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. See you Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern at Without Walls International Church. God bless you.